people, it sounds like uh, not only are they being sinister, but they sound a bit crazy. You know, speaking like that, you sound crazy. And that's the way they spoke to dad. Then they continue. What did they say? أَرْسِلْهُ مَعَنَا غَدًا يَرْتَعْ وَيَلْعَبْ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ Send him with us. Why? يَرْتَعْ وَيَلْعَبْ So that we will do يَرْتَعْ which means that we will get him to eat loads and loads. مَرْعَ is used to refer to cattle, cows and camels when they eat. When they're chomping away at their food, it means that they're eating a lot. So they're saying to dad, dad, don't worry about it. Send him with us and we'll take him somewhere where he's going to eat fantastic food. He's going to eat a lot of food. And on top of that, he's going to lab. He's going to play, enjoy himself. He's going to have some fun with us, dad. He's going to be fed really good food and he's going to enjoy himself. He's going to play some games. That's what we want to do, Dad. Yes, that's what we want to do. Please send him with us. And indeed, we, the reality is that we, we, uh, we're going to take care of him. Hafiz, we're protectors of him, especially him, of all people, Dad. You know what we're like when it comes to you. So we're so protective of him. Do you see? It smacks of guilt. It smacks of cynicism. And it's very obvious that these brothers are going crazy. And that, you know, it helps us to appreciate why though Yaqub will then go on to say, no, 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 I don't want this to happen. He doesn't force it down and put his foot down and say, there's no way that Yusuf is going to come with you. Why, Yaqub, didn't you stop Yusuf going with them, knowing that they have an evil plan? Well, a number of reasons. One of them is that I can tell, just by the way they're talking, that they have become crazy. They've become like psychopaths. You know when someone is enraged, they're so angry, or they're so consumed with envy and jealousy, do they listen to people? They don't listen to anyone. So dad knows that they are not going to listen at all. They've gone crazy. So dad needs to make the best of a bad situation. And we'll learn about that inshallah when we come back from the break. Inshallah stay with us. See you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قال إني ليحزنني أن تذهبوا به وأخاف أن يأكله الذئب وأنتم عنه غافلون قالوا لئن أكله الذئب ونحن عصبة إنا إذا لخاسرون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so the brothers of Yusuf السلام, have stooped this low that they're actually going to dad and trying to persuade dad to allow Yusuf to go with them somewhere well, according to them they're going to take him to somewhere now, somewhere that he's going to eat loads of delicious food and he's going to play games with them going to have a fun time like going to the mela going to a fair. We're going to take him to a mela, a fair. He's going to have a fantastic time. We're going to take very, very good care of him. Come on, Dad. What does Yaqub have to say about this? Allah Jalla tells us, قَالَ إِنِّي لَيَحْزُنُنِي أَن تَذْهَبُوا بِهِ وَأَخَافُ أَن يَأْكُلَهُ الذِّئْبُ وَأَنْتُمْ عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ عَنْهُ غَافِلُونَ So dad says, sons, indeed I لَيَحْزُنُنِي I 
experience huzn, grief, over the idea that you take him away from here. So dad's saying, you're talking about going and doing these things in some other place. But the reality is that me, I just feel grief at the very thought of him leaving my presence, let alone going with you. Do you see how dad's talking to them? He's indirectly telling them, no way do I want him to go. He says, Number one, I fear the very idea of him leaving my presence. And on top of that, And I fear a certain bad thing may happen. What exactly, dad, do you fear? I fear that the wolf, because they live in the deserts, and the deserts of Palestine and Sham area were known to have the most dangerous and ferocious wolves. And so, Dad says, well, I fear that whilst you guys are playing, and you're ghafil, you know, you're absent-minded, then what will happen is the wolf may come along and devour Yusuf alayhi salam. So dad's trying his best to dissuade them not to go through with their plan. He doesn't know exactly what the plan is, but he knows it's not good. He's trying to be indirect. Now you may be thinking, well why didn't Yaqub be direct and say, I know you want to get rid of him. I know that you want to harm him. And there's no way. I'm going to tie him up to the home. You're not going to take him. Well, Ahmed Nawfal, uh, a prestigious scholar, he has a very good explanation here. He said that, you see, Yaqub al Islam is a father to these children. They're his sons at the end of the day. And though they are not too great right now, the reality is that if he confronts them and he tells them straight, I know your real nature, you're evil, you're being envious, and I'm not going to allow this, then the brothers will become exposed. They'll become, if you like, humiliated, embarrassed in front of their dad. And that may lead the brothers, okay, to leave their dad, to abandon their dad and say, Dad, if that's what you think of us, we don't want anything to do with you anymore. We're not going to listen to you ever again. How dare you accuse us of doing something like that? And so Ahmed Nawfal said that here, Yaqub did not want to break the bridge of reform, subhanAllah. That Yaqub knows that possibly now I won't be able to control them, to discipline them. But if I overdo it now and lose my temper with them now, then the chance of bringing them back to me later on will also be squandered because the bridge would have been broken. A very, very profound insight here. But it seems this is very much the case because Yaqub didn't explicitly say and accuse them of wanting to do evil. He told them indirectly. And he gave them a possible scenario that look, a wolf may come and eat Yusuf and you may be unaware. You see, a sensible person on the other side who is planning on doing something evil could hear those words and say, maybe it's not a good idea. Why not just say, you're right, Dad. In fact, we never thought of that. A wolf may actually come and eat him or something bad may actually happen. Let us not do this. They may back out of that plan. However, the brothers of Yusuf are way past that point. Look at what they say in response. قَالُوا لَئِنْ أَكَلَهُ الذِّئْبُ وَنَحْنُ عُسْبَةٌ إِنَّا إِذَا لَخَاسِرُونَ They said, if a wolf, actually they said, if the wolf, the wolf, what do you mean the wolf? Well, Dad, you're the one who just said the wolf may eat him. What do you mean by the wolf? Do you know what wolf's going to eat him? No, dad was trying to be subtle, hinting that not any wolf will come, the wolf will come. And the wolf and the image of a wolf devouring weak, vulnerable prey is very much like the brothers acting 
in this situation, isn't it? That they are acting like wolves when it comes to Yusuf alayhi salam. So if was to eat him, usba. whilst we are a tough gang, we're tough guys, then we'd be losers, dad. What are you trying to say, dad? That we're losers? Is that what you're trying to say? Do you see? They're trying to emotionally blackmail dad now. They're trying to, you know, emotionally blackmail him by saying, what are you trying to say about us? That we can't even look after one of our own brothers? Like, are you trying to say that we're not strong? You're trying to say that we're loose? What's going on, dad? Ah, so, see, we're learning, subhanAllah, another lesson about envy. In fact, about sins in general, that one sin, subhanAllah, if not made tawbah of and repented for, can lead to so many other sins. They sin by hating and envying upon their brother. Already that's a sin. But then they went further to plan to kill him. That's another sin. Or plan to throw him in a well. And then another sin comes about. What is that other sin? Lying to dad. They came to their own dad, who they claim they want him to love them more than anyone else. And they told a bare-faced lie. Yes. They said, Dad, send Yusuf with us. We just want to go and have a good time. We just want to treat him. We just want him to have fun. Oh, really? See, this sin, it came about because of a previous sin. Almost like any crime, that once a person commits a crime, he has to do so many things to cover up that initial crime. So what we're learning, my brothers and sisters, is stay away from sins. Do your level best not to sin. And if you do sin, don't do another sin to cover it up. Rather, follow that sin up with a good deed. A good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, will omit and erase the bad deed. It will rub it out. Follow up a sin with tawbah, asking Allah to forgive you. Astaghfirullah, I'm sorry Allah, I shouldn't have done that. And let me show you that I'm sorry, I'll pray two rak'ah. I'll read some Quran, I'll give some charity. I want to show you Allah, I really am sorry. If you did that, you would stop this evil track being created. Stop yourself in the beginning. No one is perfect. Everyone sins. Every single one of us sins. But as the Prophet said, the, the best of the sinners is who? At-Tawwaboon. Those that are constantly turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking for forgiveness. Asking for him to forgive them for their shortcomings and their mistakes. But the brothers, unfortunately, they're not there. What do they say to dad? They try and play a guilt trip on dad. They try and make him feel guilty and they say, well, if that's the case that you think the wolf's going to eat him, what does that say about us? I mean, we can protect sheep from a wolf. You're saying we can't protect our own brother from the wolf? No. See, dad realizes that, you know what? Situation is not good. What should I do? Let me do the best I can and I can't force the situation. I will leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yaqub will now place his trust in Allah that Allah takes care of that which he has no influence over. And that teaches us that in our own lives we should try and do the best we can to make the best of every situation. However, ultimately we should trust and hope in Allah that he will take care of things and look how Yusuf al-Islam was taken care of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, my brothers and sisters, that brings us to the end of this episode. You've been watching The Divine Stories. I'm your host, Asim Khan. This has been about the life of Yusuf alayhi salam. And inshallah, we will continue this journey to explore the life and times of Yusuf alayhi salam. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.